Good morning and good day to all audience and viewer from Mahsa University Facebook page, Facebook page and YouTube channel. Welcome to the webinar conducted by Faculty of Engineering, Built Environment and Information Technology of Mahsa University. My name is Hanisa Binti Mohamad Zali and I will be served as your moderator today. Today, we will be hearing a presentation from IR Dr. Ahmad Niza Harun. Dr. Niza is the Deputy CEO and COO of the ECEOs Group of Companies. Dr. Niza is currently based in KL but has spent more than 10 years working outside Malaysia in projects and clients around the world. This include Japan, Germany, United Kingdom, China, Taiwan, Korea, Singapore, Thailand, and many others. IR Dr. Niza was the former director of Mimos Berhad, Singapore, Thailand, and many, um, sorry, IR Dr. Niza was the former director of Mimos Berhad, the organization that, that he served for 12 years leading and managing team for hardware and software development, system architecture and solution. He obtained a Dr. Philosophy from University Technology Malaysia, specializing in IoT and cloud technology. Master Business in Engineering and Business Management, Warwick University, United Kingdom. Bachelor Hans in Electrical Electronic Engineering, Akita University, Japan. He was engaged as a subject matter expert and advisor for IoT cloud IoT, Cloud, Big Data Analytics and Artificial Intelligence and fourth IR for various government organization. For direct client experience at Kementerian Dalam Negeri, Digital National Berhad, Tenaga National Berhad, Petronas, Sirim, Perkeso, Telecom Malaysia, SPAD, Felda, KTMB Berhad and many others. Without further ado, I would like to welcome IR Dr. Ahmad Niza Harun, who will be speaking to us with topic establishing an, an environmental, social and governance ESG strategy implementation plan and roadmap in software business environment. All right, IR Niza, the floor is yours. Okay, uh, thank you for your kind uh, introduction, uh, Dr. Hanisa. Uh, a very good morning to all. Uh, how are you? I hope everybody is fine. Right, so um, I'm going to take about an hour to to, dis to discuss, uh, I think the, this is a very important topic for today because everybody is talking about environmental, social and governance. So what is that, right? So this is a very broad topic actually, but uh, I want to zoom in into the software and hardware uh, business environment. For electronic student, maybe you are, uh, you, you you will be uh, listening more on the hardware parts, right? So today, a lot of things, uh, we call it IoT, Internet of Things, and the software part, uh, people who do learning on C programming, uh, using, using computer, using uh, server, so you are also uh, part of this uh, talk that I'm going to give. So my topic is establishing an SG strategy implementation plan and roadmap in software and hardware business environment. So what happened is uh, a lot of company is looking into how they can plan and put a roadmap, how to integrate the ESG into their company. So uh, later on, when uh, you graduated from MASA, you also will facing this word ESG because um, uh, a lot of uh, effort by the government as well. In fact, uh, a lot of uh, funding from government, for example, from Bank Negara, if you do not comply with ESG, no more uh, funding or loan to be given to that kind of company. So this is very, very important for this future. I think ESG is second uh, important uh, compared to uh, if you know about climate change, right? So the, the increase of temperature of the world, this is second important uh, to ensure that recycle and then people is taking care in social and also make sure that the governance is, is uh, being uh, taking well, well uh, in, in any organization right okay good this is myself i think uh the Anissa has introduced me uh, thank you uh, all right so this is a synopsis uh, i think when we talk about esg uh, the most important for any uh, development for 
software and hardware you are talking about utilization of cpu central processing unit right so uh, some of my student in uh, computer architecture i think they they start to learn what is cpu all about then we also talking about the processing power so when processing power got two two uh, elements one of the uh, digital processing which is uh, uh, core of the cpu and another one is graphic processing we call it gpu right so uh, because of these two elements, so uh, today uh, if, uh, the technology evolved, but uh, data center that has been built actually consume a lot of power. Then, uh, in fact, in the office, uh, some of you play games. Uh, you know, so you, uh, when you play games, so you take a lot of resources and also uh, energy that uh, you need to to build inside the desktop, right? For example, the GPU typically you need like 500, 600 watts right in order to operate and then some need like 1000 watt to operate then some of the uh, advanced um, rendering system for example if you want to make a movie or you want to make a cartoon using a, a, a computer so a lot of memory and also uh, energy will be uh, will be used right so as a, a person that typically we are in the software and hardware development so how we can contribute to ESG? So the entire thing that I'm going talking about is how to reduce uh, carbon, carbon footprint and also to reduce waste of energy consumption, basically to protect our environment. So if you notice that uh, any anybody in the world, uh, every country in the world, so already committed that by 2040, we need to reduce about 1.5 degrees Celsius of the world, of the temperature of the world. Why? Because of climate change, right? So uh, we see uncertain um, climate change that uh, we have never had before for example a lot of flood a lot of um, uh, people dying because of uh, not enough water right in certain country so uh, there's a lot of animal also dying a lot of uh, forests has gone because of no water because of the scarcity of the water at the same time, because of human, right? So uh, as a software and uh, hardware engineer and also user of the PC server, uh, we are one of the uh, what I call contributor to make sure that we protect our environment. Okay, when we talk about uh, ESG, so uh, there is the, I think just now we, uh, we already mentioned that temperature is one of the elements. So actually what contribute to that uh, first of all, is CO2, right? So I think a lot of country have moved to uh, EV car because they don't want to produce any, uh, no, no more CO2 to be produced. Then some people have also uh, committed to close down some of the uh, factory of coal because our energy in Malaysia today, if you notice, 59% is using coal. Coal produce a lot of CO2, right? So in the future, people are talking to have more gas or more hydrogen or more ammonia to produce energy okay uh, in the context so we need to reduce uh, power consumption we need to increase efficiency right we need to uh, apply power on demand so you you only apply certain power in order for you to do certain job right for example if you're driving a car for a distance of 30 kilometer why you need to drive 200 kilometer per hour right so you you you, you calculate what is the best and optimum in order for you to reach at certain place with a better energy consumption. Okay, then we need also to improve input and output accuracy, meaning that uh, whatever, uh, for example, if you have a, a camera at home, right? So maybe you have a civilian camera. So are you talking about to on 24 by seven or you have to, uh, to on every five minutes? So that kind of strategy is very, very important to reduce our uh, carbon footprint, right? So uh, we when we're talking about uh, uh, environmental so again climate change is, is very important natural resources right so deforestation a lot of forests now gone because of if you we, we keep losing our forest i think our oxygen will be in trouble uh, pollution there's a lot of waste right uh, that uh, do not recycle so we just throw it into the sea and also we, we are talking also biodiversity how you replace uh, if you you cut the, the tree then how you replace the tree back uh, something like that Okay, social, you are talking about human right. So uh, human is very important to the uh, ESG. So how we improve the supply chain standard, labor management, health and safety, human capital development. 
So when we move to a better country, right? So for example, like Bangladesh, they are very, very poor at this time, right? So they uh, do not have enough power in their country. So they are talking about eight hours, uh, no electric per day. So uh, they are now building up nuclear power plant. Then they are trying to build a better nation with a power, power nuclear uh, because they want to be a great country like US, like Germany, that like Japan, uh, whatsoever, who have a, a, a high technology in nuclear. Okay, so Bangladesh already started to think about the future, right? So we call it social. How we make people have a good talent uh, to 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 operate a, a nuclear power plant, for example. Governance. How we do the uh, corporate governance? How we reduce corruption? I think the, our today Prime Minister. Uh, that to say Anwar Ibrahim also talking uh, day, if every day he's talking about corruption how to reduce corruption this is a, is a, is a, in order for a country to move uh, uh, into uh, another level so corruption must be decreased you know, of course you cannot eliminate at all but it's still uh, like Japan like Singapore you know, they already achieved that kind of standard whereby zero corruption uh, executive pay board uh, diversity and also business I think is one part of the governance Okay, uh, a little bit about our company. So uh, I'm currently working uh, with the uh, DECO. So we are doing a consultant. So in in my uh, career, I think I already uh, in this company for about four years. We are doing a project management consulting. So we are also doing the uh, solution, right? Software development and also some hardware development. We also deploy uh, our team to do the uh, training uh, on the digital project management okay so my company now we have uh, three countries uh, operating in uh, indonesia singapore also in malaysia now we are opening in philippines and also in india so uh, number of employees increase by today i think we have about 300 people uh, in our company so this is the client that uh, we have served and then i also involved right so uh, working with uh, many many organization give you many many input and also many many experience that we can uh, leverage to excel as a company to, uh, to give a good advice to others lah. all right okay uh in software development so we are talking about the uh, security right what is security uh, it's a minimized waste with a hierarchy plan of decision and cost decision to reuse recycle manufacturing life cycle extension or disposal so uh it's a circle, right? Circulity is a circle. How you uh, make sure that the rubbish you throw can be recycled easily, right? So in many, many countries, you already separated glass, metal, plastic, right? But in Malaysia, not yet. But I think uh, one of those days, it will be compulsory because uh, the world is looking which country will that contribute to the C CO2 or uh, increase the carbon footprint, right? So in fact, in Europe also for those now, it's like, uh, people are committing by 2040 to reduce 1.5 degrees, but in Europe, they give you uh, carbon trading. They pay you some money if you do some uh, exercise to reduce the carbon, right? But uh, by 2050, nobody will produce carbon anymore, right? So no burning, uh, no, no fuel will be burning. Uh, then uh, everybody is talking about uh, solar system. You are talking about uh, wind turbine maybe tidal wave uh, you put uh, you can put uh, a device into the sea then you can harvest the energy maybe thermal so everybody is talking about zero carbon in 2050 what happened if malaysia don't follow it will be something like sanction right so if uh, you notice that ukraine and russia so people sanction uh, russia so it will be happen in 2050 for those who don't follow you contribute to the pollution then you take the punishment right then number two, how we, we adopt artificial intelligence or AI to manage cost, revenue, environmental impact product. So I think uh, AI now become very, very significant. If you drive EV car today, Tesla, and you can have AI whereby the, the, whereby the car will drive by itself, right? Then he can have a lot of sensor to tell you what is generous, where to stop, whatsoever. So, in fact, today we are using waste. Waste also part of artificial intelligence where, whereby you can maximize or, or tell you which is the best route to follow in this period of time. So, you, you reduce a lot of uh, CO2 or carbon monoxide from your car. Okay. 
In fact, like if you are, you are, if you're using uh, Chat GPT, for example, that people already introduced and become very popular. So he, uh, the software itself also help you to reduce your time of searching uh, information, right? So for example, if you need to open up your notebook for 10 hours now because of Chat GPT, maybe you need only one hour, right? So the nine hours saving actually contributed contributed to the world right so the 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 uh, energy that you save actually will be accumulated with others then they become a big uh, big numbers right so if everybody contributing uh, let's say uh, malaysia population about 30 million so 30 million from uh, example uh, let's say 15 50 million people using notebook right including student so everybody using only one hour instead of nine hours you've got about 90 percent reduction of energy right then implementation, so how uh, documenting uh, labor and sourcing particle in auditable uh, environment. So uh, how you make sure that it's been audited, right? So if you have uh, an ESG, so you need to have input, then you have to need output. For example, MASA want to introduce ESG in the environment or the student have a group instrument. You want to do something that have an impact, right? So you have to measure the input, right? Or we call it as is, then the output. So uh, to be right. So uh, what is the uh, outcome that you will get after you implement something, right? That it must be recorded. Today, the from the framework you can follow the ISO to twenty six thousand, where we we will have a modern uh, slavery legislation and global framework uh, for that uh, as a reference. Okay, what is the key challenge uh, in implementing uh, uh, ESG? Uh, because when we want to start something. Typically, we need to have a good methodology or call it method, measurement methods. Today, if I drive a car, right, uh, I started from home, 7 o'clock every day, then I reach office maybe about 9, 2 hours to KL, right? What is my um, power consumption or my fuel consumption or my carbon footprint that I already produce? So if I want to measure, let's say I do it at 6.30, then I reach at 7.30. So one hour of uh, uh, saving will give me a lot tremendous uh, uh, output, right? So you need to have a measurement method, okay? Can be time, can be distance, then uh, can, be, uh, out, uh, can be in terms of fuel consumption, in terms of your energy burn. So all these things you can, you can measure. You need a frameworks, you need a guidance, you need a protocol, you need a ranking, you need a standard. Right. So uh, today, a lot of organization, they are missing this, right? Because you need a learning curve. Then typically for ESG, people will come with a consultant to produce a good report. Then to tell your uh, organization that how what is the outcome of some activities. Okay, today I uh, look into many, many organization, they already put ESG is one of their initiative inside the annual report, meaning that the board of directors has concern in ASG, then they start doing something in order, in order to show to their client or to the world that they are doing something on ESG. Okay. Challenges number two uh, about the uh, fragmented ESG reporting data ecosystem. Okay, this is very, very important because ESG is holistic uh, approach, meaning that you cannot do alone. Your small class, for example, one classes or one engineering department will be a small number. But if you combine with many, many, many others, then you integrate the activities and also the report together, it will be a, number, uh, will be a big number. It will become a massa activities uh, rather than a department or individual. So adopting composable software that compromise highly integrated and interconnect module is bringing together the speed, the data source. Meaning that if you have any software that can, people can key in, people can measure, people can look out the dashboarding, so it will be better in order for the organization, organization to have a motivation. Because uh, whatever you're doing, sometimes the numbers is too small, it's not significant, but if you accumulated into a uh, three years, five years, and 10 years will be big, right? But uh, anything that you want to do, we normally we start small. So if you have to have an ESG into your organization or into your activities, so uh, you can start small. Then uh, throughout this uh, presentation, I will give some hint how to uh, 
adopt ESG into your organization. Okay, typically for ESG, so uh, we have a three to six month uh, kind of um, exercise. So we started with awareness. Number two, we operate, then we monitor. So everything you do, basically we have three elements. First, you need to educate people, right? Tell them what is their framework. We set up a team. We do a resource planning. We are building SOP. We get approval. Then we do the carbon monitoring. So what is the carbon monitoring today in Masa? How much waste that you produce? For example, do you uh, turn on aircon at 4 o'clock or 5 o'clock or 6 o'clock? So how many aircon do you have? Right? You can calculate all this, then become a number. Then from number, you translate the carbon uh, produced by Masa. And then later on, uh, you tell the, the the masa management or the maybe you want to put in into thesis or maybe you want to learn more about uh, ESG so you you start to form a team then you you start a target right for example if i produce 500 ton of uh, carbon right, this year in a year so i have target by 20, next year maybe i want to reduce to half maybe 500 ton right uh, sorry uh, maybe uh, 250 ton from 500, you reduce to 250. Then the following years, you say you I want to do more, uh, 200 times. So how what is the exercise that we we suggest to the management, right? Okay. So uh, when you operate, so normally you produce the quality edit. You have a progress reporting. You have a compliance to governance because when you do the ASG, there, there is a, a compliance. For example, uh, ISO 26000 just now. So you can follow that. Then you do the control and execution. Then at the, at the end of the part how you can tap uh, the knowledge to be transferred. At the same time, you can uh, publish your carbon reduction achievement, right? Then uh, today, there is a lot of grant also as well, uh, talking about the ESG. So you can apply the grant uh, for the master or PhD or even a degree for a small initiative, how to reduce the carbon footprint in Europe, in America, you can, you can apply that grant. I think Malaysia also uh, under MOSTI, they also have that kind of uh, exercise, you know, for you to, to apply. Okay, in terms of uh, transformation framework, so we have strategy, we have discussion, then we have enhancement, right? So people talking about value, process, resource, and technology. So how you make sure that all this will be integrated? So it's, this is like you're doing a project, right? So uh, you have to take a look on the value how you do the processing, how you, you plan the resource because everything you do, you need a resource, whether the resource can be machine or can be you, right? So a team of people that involve uh, typically will be uh, measured and also will be recorded. Then how we make sure that everything will be in continuous improvement or in Japanese, they call it Kaizen. Then how you do the value en enhancement, how we do the people empowerment and how you support the technological and government governance, right? Okay, uh, ESG development, so have uh, several phases. We have current situation analysis. So what we do, you have to do gap analysis, right? So we call it uh, as is. Then you also uh, take a look on national and global benchmark. You benchmark with others, right? You, you take a look and uh, maybe in German, in uh, uh, France, in uh, Finland. So how people do it in order to reduce the carbon print. So you, you measure also the same institution, for example, like MASA. So a university, right? So you compare university to university to be apple to apple. Uh, you are doing the gap activation. After that, you uh, formulate your own uh, idea to uh, in it to be after you have a framework or you have discussion or workshop. Then we start initiative planning. Then we detail up what is the action items and roadmap. Then uh, later you go to uh, implementation of proposed framework. So execute whatever you, you have done. But at the same time, you need to also take care of change management because uh, a lot of things that you do today will be different. So this one will have to be communicated. So it will be part of change management. For example, we need Masa to turn on the aircon at 4 o'clock instead of 5 o'clock, right? So there is change management exercise that you need to tell whether 4 o'clock will be a little bit hot when you're still in the in the classroom or you have to study uh, at four to five o'clock whether there is a lot of class or not maybe we can concentrate into a, a single building rather than a distributed building so these are kind of things you you when you execute you have to uh, put a change management of part of the exercise then uh, last not least the execution part so you need to do continuous uh, monitoring right 
So uh, condensed mentoring could be a, a group of student that doing this job for six months, later they can over, hand over to others, maybe different department. Because the content is very, very important because you need to do the continuous improvement in, on whatever idea you have implemented before. Okay, uh, now we scale down into uh, software environment. So in software environment, uh, ESG initiative, we have uh, development approach, we have uh, change management process, we have KPI and performance metrics. Then later, uh, I think in today's world, people more appreciate on business intelligence, whereby you can see all the information in a single uh, desktop, right? In a single desk, like a PowerPoint, people 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 appreciate graphic rather than numbers and also uh, like thousands of wording, right? So uh, in order for you to make sure that you communicate well to, to uh, the stakeholder, all right? So whatever your activities you do, maybe you can have a, a TV that populate all the business intelligence that telling that today what is the carbon that you reduce from yes from the same date of yesterday right so uh or last year right so uh, you can do that by pie chart by graphic uh bar chart okay so you can take that to to communicate because uh, esg must become holistic it's a uh, entire uh organization it's not only one you you cannot even though you are you are the one, but you need more in order to make it significant. Is to you yourself is uh, using a computer one hour a day, but others people still 10, 10 hours. Then it's not make any any different uh, for the organization. All right. So uh, when we talk about uh, software development, okay, today today is not like yesterday. Yesterday everybody using the PC, individual PC to do coding, right? If you use C language. You make your own uh, coding. Later, maybe you will pass to your friend to integrate. But today, environment people don't do that anymore. People using DevOps development and operation. The entire software development cycle is inside DevOps. So when you ask me which one is the best, I can suggest you use uh, Microsoft Azure, for example. So it's a built-in DevOps. When you do the development, so uh, the code. Currently, I think you, you learn uh, C code. I think Dr. Anissa also learn uh, teach uh, C language. C language that currently, if you put your PC, you will be not tested, right? The coding will be not tested. But if you take this and put into DevOps, there is a robot. They make sure that you are complying to standard and then they automatically you will perform the testing, right? From your source code that you put into DevOps, DevOps, it will start to simulate Okay, not only the software by itself, but the the machine that you use, for example, how many RAM, how many memory, you will try to optimize. Sometimes too big, right? The hardware, you lose a lot of money. Sometimes too little, the software become very, very slow. Uh, because of DevOps, have that kind of element. They can do automated testing. We call it automation. So it will tell you how when you deploy the software later on into a machine, it will tell you how big is the memory, how big is the hard disk, then how big is the code you, that you need to, to optimize, right? So today in, in uh, uh, the environment of development, you have the software that you've done. So they will call it under development. We call it development server, right? Later on, when you go to uh, next stage, they call it test server, right? There's another element of that. We call it staging server, then production server. So this is typical uh, standard being practiced in the world. So if you put into a DevOps, we will become uh, a, a good uh, guidance for you to make sure that your coding is robust and can easy deploy without any issue, right? Because sometimes when you write a code, uh, because you do not optimize the way of you writing a code in C, for example, so you do too many loop or too many jump here and there. So uh, then too many variable that you put make the computational become a problem, right? So then you, when you deploy, you do not know what is the right sizing. You deploy into a notebook to cater 1,000 user, for example, for your software. Then become slow. Everybody is complaining. But if you do uh, doing uh, in DevOps, all these things will, will, will be advised automatically. Then you can do better uh, in terms of programming, okay? So uh, today, if you do a programming, uh, there is a lot of architecture that been introduced in the market. Okay, I want to uh, share with you how important is the microservices, right? Um, 
I think a lot of university students that I met, so even in UPM, so they already embarked into microservices because the typical monolithics or service-oriented architecture, the SOA, is no longer applicable today. A lot of bank already started to have a microservices. Okay, what is microservices all about? Uh, previously, if you can ch uh, check, uh, if you look into monolithic and service-oriented, we always have a big, very big database, right? S sitting in a data center or sitting in your PC. So you have one MySQL or you use Oracle or some other database. So it's a standalone. But uh, when you do a business logic, uh, then you, you have a UI. Uh, it's always a single operation. So if you uh, learn about uh, microcontroller, right? So my student here, maybe uh, inside here. So we always do in single loop, right? Because you are writing an assembly. But today, it's different technology because uh, the powerful of operating system, uh, we can have a small, small program running standalone, then it will use less CPU. Okay, for example, if you look on the right here, you have a lot of database. Database one, two, three, four, five. I think this five database. Every one of them will will process a different a different services. For example, the first one will service only the your login part, right? So the, the, we call it credential, right? So you, you put a uh, login, your name, your password, it will go into one database. Later, when you go in into a second layer, it will be a financing. So the financing, we have your own database. So he do not care about the first one because the first one already passed. So you go a second layer, second layer, you only have a financing data inside that. Then uh, maybe that user only use financing data, the third and fourth and five actually talking about maybe you, you are talking about your uh, setting of your software, yeah? software configuration. Uh, uh, number three, maybe you are talking about uh, security, you know, to make sure that uh, is uh, the, the, the thing is robust and whatsoever. Then the fifth one, maybe you are talking about under the application, right? Maybe loan or whatsoever. So you on the the DB and the services only work into uh, demand. So we call it microservices is uh, resources in demand. So you only take whatever you want to do at that time. Uh, the rest can sleep. Whereby the monolithic and service oriented is always busy, right? The entire software have to work in order to service you, even though you don't use it, right? But microservices is on demand. Okay, the beauty of microservices also. Let's say my resources is not enough, it will be auto scalable, right? Because the architecture is auto scalable, so it will know by itself that my memory is not enough, so it will auto scale, right? So uh, microservices have this kind of uh, capability uh, compared to others, right? Uh, today, when you learn uh, about, uh, even though you are an electrical engineer, so there is a lot of software demand in the market. Today, when we I work with uh, Energy U3. The TMB, even though you're electrical engineer, you are an electronic engineer, most of the time you are playing with uh, software. Right? Most of the time. You don't play with the hardware itself because the hardware come in a module that you also cannot open or we can because it will be uh, void. Then we, we only understand from the software that operate and talk to the machine. Huh? We don't operate the machine by itself. So it's, it's, a, it's a different, different game already. That's why uh, for me, uh, later on, if you join a company, if you want to make a software for something, so take a look on uh, microservices. Even uh, the recent one, when I was in the uh, uh, Ministry of Home, uh, uh, Ministry of uh, home, uh, home Ministry, so what happened is uh, a lot of their system, uh, we're going to use uh, microservices because we are talking about processing a million of passport, right? So uh, when you use uh, monolithic services oriented, whatever, what, what happened is you need a huge machine uh, to handle only one person because you need to turn on the entire operation. But for microservices, let's say I have <clears throat> one person, so only one small uh, CPU and also memory and also the software will entertain you. But when I they, uh, when there's they, when we see that there is a uh, hundred thousand is coming, so the, it will auto scalable, right? When we see a million is coming, it will auto scalable. Of course, when you scalable, the energy will increase. But when you have one person, the others will shut down, right? The others will not operate. So this is the beauty of microservices. 
Okay, uh, when you compare uh, microservices in terms of technical, uh, so the size is very small, right? Then speed of deployment very fast because uh, microservices is something that you, when you develop a C code, you compile into a small uh, exe, for example, right? You compile become exe. Uh, you just take that input into environment of uh, microservices. He will he will start to run. Then running, then he also have a capability of uh, rapid and continuous deployment. You can add in, add in, add in. So you can see the features is uh, increasing by time, right? So you can have a very quick deployment compared to uh, you need to compile a very big EXE or some other library, uh, Java that you need to have everything in it. Uh, in, in. But this one is you you only have specific, um, specific software to run for something, then you can keep increasing the features uh, for for example like uh, some software like banking software right you can have it by module you do not need by to to have everything to wait for two years so you can start to launch first maybe three module then later you increase the module as a one you, you you need it, okay uh, persistent so each service is free to choose its own data storage right the 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 software itself have a capability to choose by its own data, data storage, right? Rather than you need to enter into a big uh, data storage, which sometimes will make you make mistake, you rewrite into a, some some area that you're not supposed to, right? So you have a, a trouble. So this one because you you have all your own container that you can take care. Okay, easy onboarding. So uh, today um, when I work in uh, microservices, I can have ten engineers with me. Right, so I do not wait them to complete their part. Once any engineer have done, they can deploy into the microservices. Then I can appreciate or I can see the system is running. Right, uh, playground programming, so you can utilize various technology stack per services, meaning that it will auto integrate. Right, so you uh, you can have an API uh, among among the team. So you have determine what you need to do. Then you can make it as a stack. Right, so you can deploy the stack first while waiting for others to complete. Right, then uh, you can work with many many uh, programming. For example, if I have uh, one system for Java, I can have also one in Python. I I can have one in .NET, right? C, C sharp, so whatsoever. So I can I can have that that environment rather than a monolithic. You need to have one programming for the entire system. This is different. Uh, scalability, you are talking about assembly uh, scalable through the use of a container. So we always put our program into container. The container will help us to talk to other container in order to make into a system. So uh, this is a sample of uh, microservices. Okay, I think some of them I already mentioned. It's autonomous, specialized. It can simplify cross-team coordination, simple run enterprise. I think a lot of bank like, uh, I think CIMB also moved to microservices. Uh, some other banking uh, because uh, they they want to optimize their server, so they already started to to use microservices as part of their uh, development uh, framework. So if you ask me, uh, what is the difference between the things that we learn every day in Masa, right? For example, C programming, we learn Python. So what is the different? This one is architecture, right? The method that you install a Windows, for example, after you install Windows, you you put a lot of services. And from that, the programming you put into that services, right? So it's uh, plug and play. It's, uh, it's today, it's, there's a lot of um, company that uh, introduce a microservices application. You can use that, right? Obviously, the OS could be Windows, could be Linux, and could be others. But again, today you can see a lot of operating system integrating into a entire uh, architecture, okay? All right, so... Um, in, uh, talking about uh, programming, so uh, I think CPU have so so much on limitation, right? There's a lot of limitation happen today. Uh, if you want to do a very good uh, computation, computation, right? So my old days when I was in Japan, so uh, first year I when I do rendering, it will take me like five days to complete, right? But after a while, the CPU has become very fast. I think when I work, it only took me an hour. Right to do some random number, right? But today, uh, if you use GPU, it become probably a few seconds, right? Because uh, CPU you have only several core. I think your notebook, I think maximum like uh, i nine, I think about sixteen core, right? But GPU have thousand of cores, so you can imagine you can have a thousand of brain 
to process and to to do the uh, processing for you right so there is a method whereby some programming you do not use cpu but you use gpu okay example bitcoin right the, the uh, bitcoin bitcoin always take your gpu resources not your cpu because your cpu have constraint right when you want to process a lot of data a lot of memory so you go to gpu okay bitcoin or uh, uh, some other um, a cryptocurrency they they are fully utilizing gpu why because gpu is more faster then the amount of energy let's say you use cpu you can compare like you have 16 core gpu like my uh, pc that i having today is 2000 2000 core <laughs> 2000 compared to 16 you cannot compare at all then i need to turn on only a few seconds in order to do some rendering graphic rendering it will complete me in one second or two seconds but cpu will take me eight hours so that kind of comparison so for student maybe uh, when you work in the future when you want to do a random you want to do simulation uh, rendering graphic processing look, look at CUDA CUDA course uh, NVIDIA NVIDIA for example uh, using CUDA as a as a code right you are using C right but in in uh, GPU using uh, CUDA to do the programming okay uh, then uh, we also talking about RPA I think RPA today become very popular uh, my job now in uh, Petronas so we are starting to adopt robotic process automation because we want to eliminate error and then eliminate some of the things that human you know if you 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 do it also uh, not will not making any any benefits uh, for example the human res, human resource okay i give you example the project that i'm currently currently done so uh, if you uh, take a car you run at highway you drive at highway so you can see a lot of uh, camera right so typically if i the the camera take your picture it will take maybe five to six days to process and send to you right then you receive it like sometime as late as three months or six months because of what because there's a lot of human intervention so the recent project what we do is very intelligent so once i capture your car within 10 seconds i can send you someone through your email or whatsapp right so this is the project that we are doing now so uh, at the back actually there is 10 processing right you have to open 10 system sap system you have to open uh, financial system you have to open this and that but it will be done by robotic robot will check for you right he will log in for you he will grab the data he will compare to another system whether that's your, your ic number is correct or not where, where is your address you will go to multiple system so uh it will you will you will make sure that everything become in a 10 second right rather than three months because three months you need to on the computer you need to have a resource power you need to have a lot of system that you need to turn on and turn off right so uh, then human also sometimes you work only eight hours you don't work more than that right yeah of course you can take over time but for rpa it will work 24 hours for you right for example if i take your camera uh, your picture at night at 2 p.m 2 a.m so uh, we do not need any human intervention it will auto process and send you the uh, summon letter right so this is rpa so uh, what rpa can do it can help you to fill in the forms right um today if you go to certain website you have to do a lot of things right you have to fill in your address name but actually that, that that's the thing that you already have at the background right the government have you have everything on you right they, they 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 can they can get your data as 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 when they want but because of the system in silo for example you are paying your income tax the, your information typically at the back is in in the uh, national registration so or your uh, J, uh, your jpj right so uh, at the back we can do rpa to crawl all data and auto populate into a form in a few seconds rather than you have to key in because once you start to key in uh, reference here and there typing back your address whatsoever it will be slow right the form should be complete in 10 seconds rather than one hour okay so you can do if, if then decision right if this happen we'll do this if this happen do that extracting reformatting data moving file folder connecting system through api 
uh, reading writing to database, making calculation, scraping data from the web, logging into web enterprise application whatsoever. This is robot, right? This is tremendous. So when you work later on, please, at least you, you learn UI pass. There's a software called UI pass. It's free for you to download. Then you could you can do wonders, right? So in, in fact, uh, like chat GPT also, you can ask chat GPT to do programming for you, right? You want to, you just write, I want the program to be behave like this and that, you write for you. Okay, then they combine with RPA, you become, become more, more advanced. Okay, uh, and then uh, we also talking about bootstrap. I think uh, if you want to do uh, development, uh, is, for example, we want to build um, uh, a portal, right? So why not you just use a bootstrap? Yeah, just, yeah, because when you want to have your own, it will be slow, right? When you use bootstrap, it can produce very fast. The framework can be written in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, whatsoever. So it will be uh, the people that contributing to the open source because millions of people contributing into an idea, talking to you as a single person, that you will be not, uh, not effective. Why not taking a million idea, take the best that suit you, then you produce something, right? So today, technology is not a core developer. It's a copy-paste engineer, right? So today, today world. So my engineer, we we hardly do a core programming. So what happen is we always copy people the good work, then we paste into our program, then we we change the the language or the look and feel. That's that's all. But I don't change the core because sometimes the core is took you a lot of time. For example, a library for IoT, right? If you don't take from Arduino or some others, it will take a lot of times. During my young time, I in order to for me to develop a library, it took me six months. Today, I do development. When I was in Mimos, it took me uh, an hour to complete some job, right? So you can see the efficiency and the difference because we are talking about carbon footprint. If you are, the longer you are in the PC, the longer you you less efficient. So uh, the more carbon footprint will be produced. You consume a lot of energy. Okay, uh, this is another uh, challenges when you are working with some environment, for example, whether should I buy from the market, call it commercial of the chef, or should I develop myself, right? All this dilemma, right? Sometimes when you were in the project, so the boss will ask you, you want to buy or want to, 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 to uh, develop? So most of us today, I suggest you buy commercial of the chef because most of the software in the world can suit you already. Not the last time, right? Last time, yes, because uh, you have your own um, uh, algorithm, you have your own uh, look and feel, whatsoever. You want to have something on the development, own development, because the own development will take you very long time. It could be two years, but for commercial of the chef, you just buy, download, and also start to use it. Then sometimes you can customize a little bit here and there, which is good enough, right? Try to follow best practice rather than rather than you try to develop your own, right? So if not, if you try to do everything your own, it will be slow, right? For example, if you have a car, so if you want to, you you only focus maybe the engine part and the body part. The rest maybe you buy the tire the steering, the gear compartment, the, the, the engine oil. So you don't you don't produce by yourself, right? So it is better, for example, like Proton, I only do the uh, testing part. So I buy commercial on the side from GD. I rebrand it to Proton. Then uh, my sales increase a lot, right? Then I can reduce uh, manpower. I can reduce my factory, whatsoever. So uh, this is a standard that happened in Europe last time, right? So why a uh, European car in the UK and some other country has failed? Because they do not want to cooperate, right? So they try to build their engine by itself, but in smaller volume, right? So uh, Japan do not do that, right? If I have a, a good engine from others, I just rebrand it. Nobody know that this is from Toyota when I put it Honda, right? So when some of the module that is low volume, right, why not you just buy engine from others, you rebrand it, you tweak a little bit, become yours, right? So it's the same thing. The commercial of the chef, you just buy, you uh, rebrand it, or you take the open source, uh, then you, you, you tweak it, then become yours, right? So 
uh, we are talking about efficiency uh, in terms of uh, IP intelligent property is different things right so uh, in terms of carbon footprint this is the direction that people are talking to use less energy in order to produce something okay uh, we also encourage uh, open source right okay open source whereby uh, open source is a new uh, standard uh, even today if you compare linux to windows right windows cannot beat linux forever because linux got a billion of uh, contributor compared to microsoft maybe you have 100 over 1000 developer right 100000 you cannot compare to uh, billion right million uh, contributor again like uh, macintosh right mac when you bought a mac actually the operating system at the back is linux nobody know right because mac also give up to do their own uh, os because they know that linux will be superior forever because of um, uh, operating system your android right so android uh, uh, android phone so from google is open source so is the the base also still linux at the banks but because of android become free and also more superior to others uh, people running windows uh, nokia run their own proprietary uh, os all gone you cannot survive right so so in this suggestion you you should use uh, open source and for example if you want to make a uh, uh, lot of things uh, uh, from joomla right i think joomla is one of the best today that i also use uh, in the world also 2 million active website have been produced then they also make a uh, content management system, 6% known business website. They, they, are, they are moving very fast. Then they are very, very good and very, very stable, right? So you can take a look on Joomla. Uh, you can develop your own website very easy, very fast, right? So uh, installation also free. Um, the way business they are doing is they are selling the template, right? For example, you can to beautify your website to put uh, alarm clock whatsoever you can just buy the template then it, it works right you just paste the code it works right this is very very interesting okay uh manual form to digitalization uh, i think a lot of things that happening today uh, please do not use any hard copy anymore you can use google form uh, even um the uh, examination today right uh, i i work in in, in commentary and um, uh, uh, the, the Ministry of Education. So what happened is they are also moving up to a digitalization. So for example, our Form 5, uh, talking SPM, um, all will be digitalized at government side. Then when the teacher uh, do the mark, they do it online. They do, 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 do hard, hard copy already because it saves time then manage your paper better, right? So if you have had I-5, let's say they ask, they ask there's 3,000 or 4,000 paper, you get missed up, then uh, this will be difficult for you to organize, right? Because you, they, they don't have name, they ha only have numbers, then let the computer take care of you, take care of that, right? So you gain speed and then you do not have uh, loose information. But, and then at the same time, the um, Minister of Higher Education can see directly what you are doing, for example, uh, you have a deadline, right? So uh, it given to you about uh, 1,000 paper for you to to mark uh, within the two weeks. But if I can see you, you are having trouble. In one week, you can only finish 10. So the ministry can receive rescue you yeah? rather than uh, you just wait because um, some some places may be in trouble. Internet connectivity, flood, whatsoever, or the the teacher become sick, right? So you need to rescue. So the computer will know your son alarm to the teacher and then uh, to the minister of higher education then they can replace or uh, check this, uh, the, the, the teacher uh, condition all right uh, another thing is about the ocr optical character recognition i think uh, some of the elements in fact in our company that sometimes we want to claim our meal you know you do business meal sometimes you have uh, Told that you need to pay. Sometimes it comes with a paper, right? uh, no choice. But uh, what happened is uh, we do not need the paper to be sent to the office. You just need to do OCR, then you can put into the uh, human resource management system. This is one of example, right? So you reduce uh, people uh, people intervention. At the same time, you optimize the claim can become faster, right? Because of you process yourself. Then the other person only do auditing. 
rather than the, the, that person have to scan your document into the system, uh, check in into SAP, uh, whatsoever. So why not all the information will be tabulated automatically. It will simplify your any claim, for example, medical or whatsoever. Right? Medical, you go to clinic, they always give you uh, hard copy, right? The MC. Now, that MC sometimes can be loose because you do not take care properly. You can take a picture, upload to the system, then everybody know that you only live today, right? You go to many, many system. Uh, for example, if you don't attend the exam all the day, the exam will automatically adjust the suitable date for you. It will be, you know, no need to, to, you need to call this and that, right? So become more, more efficient. So just now we talk about GPU and CPU. So uh, the latency of time from six uh, milliseconds can reduce to two milliseconds. So CPU is three times slower than GPU. So that's why uh, in the future, uh, before the quantum, I think uh, another three or four years, we are going to forget about CPU anymore. We are talking about quantum, quantum computing. So hopefully uh, before that, before that happen, uh, I, I believe that uh, GPU will be uh, next move of the world, right? To do the complex programming. Okay, and then uh, you, when you do uh, a lot of things uh, in uh, programming and also do a lot of project, I think you must spend a lot of time in the optimization. Okay, you need to optimize your work. So you need to plan, right? For example, uh, it's a quote from uh, uh, one of the people that I, I learned before, they said, uh, sharpen your saw, right? Before you do, before you cut the tree, right? So if I got eight hours to 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 cut the tree, so seven hours to sharpen the saw, one hours to cut the tree. Because of, if you sharpen the, 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 the it's, a, it's a planning, if you plan it better, right? It's a, uh, actually the, the, the word come from Abraham Lincoln. So he, he, he always mentioned that, right? So planning is very, very important, right? If you fail to plan, then you plan to fail. So that's that's uh, all these people are saying. So make sure that you are using Microsoft Project to do your planning. Don't do in hard copy because it will not auto calculate. It will not alert you. You do not see in a big picture because software can simplify and help you to to produce more efficient. Okay, uh, infrastructure environment. So you have uh, like. Um, uh, people now go to cloud. Why? Why Microsoft today? He doesn't um, like you to have um, a software license that you call it perpetual, right? Inside your server, you have your own server. You host three six five, for example. No more Microsoft uh, Office, whatsoever uh, is now in the cloud, right? So you can because of networking, because of the security, data storage, you can be better then uh, I encourage you when you join a company like our, our company now today, we do not have, we have zero server. Our policy is zero server. No need to maintain server, no need to put account whatsoever. All will be inside the cloud, right? It's cheaper, it's cheaper compared to the, you having a, your own server, you have uh, buying the perpetual, it's cheaper. It could be one third or one fifth, right? Uh, by having uh, infra-less infrastructure, okay? So energy saving, uh, if you have buy uh, aircon, please buy inverter. If you buy regulator, buy, please buy inverter or you buy server or you buy desktop. You, uh, I think server got inverter version. Uh, you can see that 49.4% uh, less energy. In fact, my house, uh, typically every month, uh, my bill will become about 700 ringgit. Lately, I changed uh, one or two aircon using inverter. So what happened is now my bill, I can save uh, about 500 ringgit a month. So I save 200, right? Then uh, please upgrade your PC, right? Um, don't, don't uh, in order for you to be maximized, right? You, if you bought a PC today, don't use it for 10 years, right? So PC become cheap and cheap. The most important is the efficiency of the core, right? You can have more more time to 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 uh, in waiting mode right you have more time to in, in waiting mode rather than you have a very good processor to complete your job in, in few seconds right for example if you are doing a adobe photoshop whatsoever why not you complete in five seconds rather than one hour because some some processor is very slow 
don't go to slow, slow processor. Of course, higher processor uh, is more money. But if you upgrade every three years or five years, so there's a lot of company that today, they do not own the PC, right? What happened is their rental. So they have agreement with a company when I was in Mimos last time. So we used to rental. So uh, at the end, it's cheaper, cheaper and also more efficient to have that compared to you buying your PC. Then after three years or five years, you need to upgrade memory, you need to get hard disk whatsoever. So they will take care for you. Then uh, we also encourage uh, our staff in the office and also our client to have sleep screen sleep mode, right? So now a lot of people, they don't care, right? Basically, um, they they when they go out for lunch whatsoever, they they just leave PC like that. But uh, please do a sleep mode, right? So I always put my PC every five minutes. If I don't do anything, you will sleep mode, right? Sometimes it could be hardware sleep mode. It can be you can you can set uh, maybe five minutes is um, screen 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 sleep mode right then after another 15 minutes it will be totally shut down right so discount things it will be better for the pc because it will not run something that empty right so unnecessarily your power supply will damage very fast because power, power supply we are talking about operating hours how many operating hours that you use that that, that things right so it's the same uh, if you uh, make it shorter in times of operation you can have a longer right longer duration of using that pc okay then uh, core uh, make sure that you you use a lot of core you now the computing power is uh, focusing is in core right less than uh, uh, frequency for example people like to have five gigahertz but you have only two core compared to uh, you have four uh, cpu uh running at two gigahertz right? it will be faster that you have more cores like just now i mentioned about gpu you have 20, 20 uh, 2000 core compared to 60 core so obviously the core will produce more output compared to uh, your frequency okay uh, this is another things that when you want to do programming reducing uh, cpu time uh, storing compile program reducing search time for sas executable files fixing variable lengths using parallel processing, reducing CPU time, but program compilation optimization. So if you have uh, familiar with a compiler, so there is a function call optimized by code. So you can use that, right? Okay, uh, again, uh, a lot of people also moving to edge processing. What is the meaning of edge processing? It's processing by nodes. For example, some of the work that need to be done on my financing part could be process processing on my handphone compared to I need to tell the server to, de to do and de this and that. So we call it age processing. So you are at the end, you are taking my biometric to verify whatsoever, it will not go to the server. So today, a lot of things happening at the age processing, right? For example, you have a camera at home. So if you have any event, you, you, you take the picture, so it will process there and then give you the alarm rather than you go to server and tell you, right? Okay, and alternative energy in the future, maybe uh, you can start thinking of putting a solar unit on the roof, right? And then you can hold F also biomass unit, whatsoever, just to reduce some of the carbon print that you produce, right? So the renewable energy, call it RE, from wind turbine, from biomass, is now very, very popular and very cheap uh, for you to consider. A small effort, for example, you can put wind turbine like I put in, in MIMOS, so it will contribute to the total energy, right? It will reduce the sum, but uh, again, uh, solar, you need so many of them in order to compensate the air condition that you are running. Uh, wind turbine, Malaysia have been trouble because we do not have a lot of wind. But in Europe, I think 30% of their energy now today become from one turbine. One turbine. So this is my proposed uh, ESG roadmap. So if you want to do uh, any implementation, you need to understand what is critical success factor. I think a lot of people when doing a master or phd uh, one of the things that you need to measure is the critical success factor we call csf in terms of motivation top down dedicated team impact study time and cost okay uh, this is seven step how you can implement an uh, esg uh, strategy first you need to do the material assessment second you do current base state third one objective and goal you have future uh, state gate uh, strategic roadmap Number six, you have action KPI and then also report progress. Then you translate into short and mid-term and long-term uh, based on your 
finding just now then i think uh, based on that i want to stop now because this is uh, my last slide thank you very much for listening to me i pass over to tahanisa hello yeah hello okay ah, yes. okay we have come to the end part of the presentation uh, thank you, IR Dr. Niza, for addressing this interesting topic and for this sharing session. Hopefully, the presentation was beneficial for everyone. On behalf of Masa University, we would like to thank you for joining us today. Thank you for your time and cooperation. Goodbye. Thank you, thank you. Bye bye. For the best presentation. Bye. All the best. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you. <laughs>